This is a book I have been um, reading, and it is so interesting. Um, it is mainly concerning the uh, major arcana and um, the tarot. And it could be the Marseille, it could be um, Italian cards, but it talks about the actual images in um, the actual cards and how they kind of evolved especially through myth and through sort of a, um, a universal cultural, um, I guess, storytelling. So it's the Devil's Picture Book, The Complete Guide to Tarot Cards, Their Origins and Their Usage by Paul Hewson. Um, this is probably one of the least hokey books I've ever read about the tarot. Least hokey um, as far as like talking about how um, images were, were, you know, how they depicted in all the different parts in it. So it has illustrations throughout the, um, the book, all drawn by the author himself, which is really neat. There's also some traditional spells that are here. Um, there is, before you even start looking at the cards, there's sort of a uh, introduction to um, there's, a, there's uh, terms um, then there's getting starting to read the cards that's chapter one then it talks about um, all the different layouts and where they uh, came from even really complex ones like this one <laughs> There's the triangle. It also talks about games. Uh, where did the tarot come from? And then it says uh, back to 1392, essentially. Then there's something called tarot sorcery. Then it's the old religion. And then it gets into the actual images. So this is talking about the, the magus or the batelier or the juggler. So um, each chapter in this section in the Devil's Picture Book talks about the actual card. So here's what it says. Closely linked to the fool, he is all that remains of the classical god Mercury. Mercury or Greek Hermes was another son of Zeus, the All-Father, this time born of the gentle nymph Maya. Thus he was the elder half-brother Dionysus, who was placed in his care as soon as he was born. Um, Hermes was above all else eloquent, as our word mercurial implies. Um, let's see. Um, then it talks about the, the pointed our Aegean cat may have been derived from an ancient herdsman's headgear, like the one worn by Mithra himself. Um, many old representations of Hermes show him wearing a cap, as do early Renaissance tarot jugglers. The broad-rim cap of maintenance seen in most modern versions of this card is undoubtedly formed from the, un from the usual medieval misrepresentation of the classical winged helmet of Mercury. The rod which he carries may either be a reproduction representation of the catechus, his magical sleep-inducing heraldic wand of office, or simply a version of the magician's ebony staff. Mercury, the Latin name derives from the word merx or mercator, implies one who is concerned with barter and selling. He's the archetypal uh, wheeler-dealer and purveyor of information, as well as a priestly initiator, initiator and psychopomp. Um, and let's see. It is derived... It is from the name that the Navish god Loki, that our word luck derives, the English witch king William Rufus used to take oaths upon the face of Lucca, and the belief of Loki has lingered in English to this day, and old Lincolnshire charm for banishing disease performs a required magical action thrice with these words, once for God, once for Wad, and once for Lok. Woden is Odin, and Loki is... Look, look is Loki. And then here is the uh, figure of Mercury. And it talks about the Mantagna Tarot, 
Jugglers depict as a gypsy cobbler or artisan instead of the fairground mountebank. And it even talks about Shakespeare. It talks about the little red spirit or goblin, uh, attendant of the goddess Diana. Then it talks about, in this section, pyromancy, hydromancy, aromancy. Really interesting book. And then, so you see there's I mean, all the drawings in here. There's one. Um, the funny thing is that the appendix is a note on the minor arcana. So it just gets a little very short, not even a page about that. And then there's a bibliography in the back. He's referenced quite a few books with footnotes, one of which I just bought. It's called, um, it's by C.G. Leland, Aradia, The Gospel of the Witches. Um, it looks like it was published in 1899. Um, it's almost like a grimoire of spells for Diana. In Terra Sorcery, there's the Tree of Life, so you get a little bit of everything in this, but it's all rooted in like mythology and how things were, you know, came to be. The book is in print. Um, he also has another book called um, There's the Coffee Table of Witchcraft and Demonology, Mastering Herbalism, The Keepsake, which is a novel, the Offering, that's also a novel and how to test and develop your ESP. Um, there's another book that he wrote. Um, I think it's called The Mystical Origins of the Tarot that I really want to get. Um, this is actually print on demand, so it's, it's currently in. You can, you can uh, purchase it. Um, mine was printed on demand, but wow, this book is good. You can easily read it, you know, right through. It's, it's not even 250 pages to read. Um, but really gives you a solid kind of ground for um, the major arcana and the symbolism involved um, for the Marseille. It even mentions the Mantegna um, and um, traditional uh, Toroki uh, cards. Um, so yeah, this is, wow, this was really, it's a good read. And so um, I talked about it a little bit in one of my book recommendations, but I read it and wow, it's good. So I highly recommend this book and it's just a fun read. Anyway, thanks for watching.